Philip Kennedy Johnson, Dale Eaglesham, and Will Conrad explore what Binnider has been up to as the anti-hero works to find what has become of Apollo as he raises an army to combat Mongol and his war zooms. Philip Kennedy Johnson gives us a fantastic tie-in side story to his War World saga by exploring what Midnighter has been up to ever since he escaped death in the arena pit in the first part. Johnson explores the idea of Midnighter teaming with Byla to instill Superman's message of hope and inspire others in the slaves, but also it's a message that he doesn't follow at all, instead deciding to dole out his own version of justice the only way he knows how, through hyperviolence. It was also great getting to see Byla the storyteller again regaling the slaves with Superman's exploits like the death and return of Superman among others and it's helping them understand that there is more to life than Mongol and his bloody arena battles and living in chains. With Superman getting his powers from the Genesis fragment that we saw in the last issue, I'm looking forward to the big push towards the finale of this simply amazing storyline. Every issue so far has just been better than the last and I can't wait to see how Johnson ends it all. Dale Eaglesham and Will Conrad tag in on the artwork this issue, giving us some fantastically bloody and violent pages that play to Midnighter's strengths really well. I really enjoyed all of the lighting in most of the pages, especially the pages where it's doused in the flames of Warworld and there's giant shadows cast on the wall and everything, it just looked fantastic. Action Comics issue 1041 was a fantastic side quest of an issue that explored Midnighter's role in Superman's rebellion against Mongol, exploring how in his own way the anti-hero helps instill Superman's virtues in others. I'm going to give this issue a 10 out of 10. Action Comics issue 1041 heads weeks into the past where the teller of tales of Byla Esh is beaten by a Warzoon for telling Notling's stories of Superman the Saviour who will come to Warworld and save them all. The being shows them a hologram of Superman being stabbed by Mongol in the arena, knowing Superman falls to their lord. The Warzoon sentence the storyteller to death but before he is killed, Midnighter blows his way into the building, killing the Warzoons in a bloody mess. The Notlings ask if he is Superman as Lucas vomits and passes out. 17 days later, a war zoom proclaims Superman's blood now fattens the blind worms, asking who else will question the greatness of Warworld and who will challenge Mongols' rule. A red cloaked being approaches, asking which of the war zooms is Thargul the Bog. The villain demands to know who they are and who names the blood priests, but the being will only say they have come a long way for Thargul. The war zoom and the blood priests attack, but the cloaked being cuts them up as if they are nothing, as it's revealed he is Midnighter. The war zoom thinks that he is Superman and Lucas thinks humans really all do look the same to the war zooms, finding Batman comparisons to be annoying but Superman comparisons to be just plain rude. Midnighter knows that Thargul knows where Apollo is, demanding he spill his guts, literally, and tell him. The slaves ask Lucas if he's Superman but the hero tells them who he really is and how Superman and him aren't really talking at the moment. He tells them that Superman tends to not kill kill people like he does, wanting them to grab a weapon as he smashes up their chains. One of the woman warriors is angered that he broke her iron, knowing that she blinded a Lenori for one of those iron chains. Another says that the chains are the only thing of value on the war world and he shouldn't touch what isn't his. Lucas isn't impressed, knowing the iron is just a tool for their evil god king and how he uses it to keep them all tired and their hands slow in case they ever figure out that he's been filling their heads with lies. He grabs Thargil, saying, that if they tire of being slaves they are welcome to come along, but for the others, them telling him how tough they are while showing off their chains isn't landing how they think it does, and if they want to show him what they are made of, they can do so without the chains. Over the next few weeks, the slaves begin revolting in Superman's name, carving Superman's House of El symbol into everything as the storyteller continues telling stories of Superman's battle with the unstoppable Doomsday, and how Superman fought until he had no blood left to shed. Not to prove himself the strongest, but to protect the weakest. The stories continue being told by the Notlings as a war zoom demands one of the Notlings get out of the road or they will run them down. The child says that they have the dead who speak for them much like the war zooms, and the dead say that they should know better. Midnighter attacks with his warriors, with one warrior stopping another from killing the war zoom, reminding him of Superman's words and how he says that no life is worth more or less than their own. Midnighter however cuts the war zoom's head off, demanding they find one named Sergren. The warriors soon find the Warzoon and Midnighter interrogates
interrogates him, wanting him to take them to Apollo and tell him how to unhook the hero from their machines without killing him. Zergren knows that they can't take him out since the power source will fail and the magnetic coils in the central hemisphere will power down, but Midnighter doesn't care about that, wanting to get Apollo out or he will kill the being. Byla Esh continues his stories in the Thelogian Caves, telling the tale of Superman battling an evil magical queen, being the only one left standing against the villain who had turned everyone else to her bidding. Thalur asks how Superman was able to go against the queen, but the storyteller says that he knew the, the queen true weakness and how to exploit it, but that's another story for another time. Byla is told that Midnighter has returned as Lucas sends a short message to Natasha, telling her to be ready to move soon since he's taking down the Star Forge that night. Byla goes to meet with Lucas, telling the hero that he's been busy freeing refugees who find their way to the Necropolis. Midnighter wants to figure out a backup site just in case Warzunes find them since someone will no doubt get careless very soon. Byla asks about the message he left for Natasha, so Lucas tells him that he found the engineer he was looking for, planning on hitting the sunken temple to free Apollo. Byla reminds him that, that their army is still too small, but Midnighter knows that once they get Apollo, they'll be strong enough. But the storyteller wonders what happens then, since the Unmade made short work of Apollo the first time, and why would this time be any different? He tells Lucas the rebellion isn't ready, and destroying the Star Forge will kill many of them, as well as himself included. Midnighter says his loyalty is with the authority and it's time to get off planet. Byla thinks that Superman would say something about this, but Midnighter snaps, saying that he's sick of hearing about Superman since the hero wants to leave Apollo alone, but he refuses to let that happen. The heroes are soon alerted to a prisoner being taken by the warriors, who say that there is a horde of berserkers heading for the arena pits to kill everyone inside. Midnighter knows that Superman, Natasha, and Omak are in there, but the boy says that the Superman and Krillux aren't in the pits and Omak is helping the berserkers. Despite being shocked, Midnighter doesn't want to change the plan, and if Omak has flipped, then they need Apollo now more than ever. Byla thinks that, that there is no time to free Apollo, but Midnighter tells him that he won't be planning sneak attacks now, and it's time to hit them hard with open war. He admits without Superman this won't work, but Superman soon appears before them, telling the hero that he wishes there was time for him to tell him how humbled and inspired it is to see the refugees and everything Midnighter has accomplished, but Lucas never needed his help in that regard and Mongol has forced their hand. Superman tells Midnighter to gather every fighter they have and follow him to the arena pits where shortly the berserkers enter, told to kill all of the Felosians. Natasha confronts the warriors, telling them that they should pick on someone who has iron to claim. Teacher says that they are there to kill prisoners, but the ones brought in to kill Steel cares little for her iron. Omak is revealed to have joined the war zones as the wall is blown in by Superman, who knows that this doesn't sound like the Omak he knows, wanting to remind them of what they came there to do and get those people home. Those people.